お待たせいたしましたお時間となりましたのでただいまより第3回日本アフリカビジネスフォーラム JABF2021 セッション6アフリカの人々の生活の質の向上を開会いたしますどうぞよろしくお願いいたします本フォーラムは日本語、英語、フランス語の音声にて配信しておりますプルダウンメニューから本日の日付とご希望の言語を選択してご視聴くださいはじめに内閣官房健康医療戦略室次長西村秀隆様より開会のお言葉をいただきます西村様お願いいたします Thank you very much for inviting me today. Your Excellencies, Honorable Quek Ajman Men, Ministers of Health, Republic of Ghana, Professor Kyoko Ikegami, the moderator, the all participants, and distinguished guests. I'm Hidetaka Nishimura, a Deputy Director General, Cabinet Secretariat, the Government of Japan, and In charge of healthcare policy. I'm honored to be invited to give a talk here today. First of all, as a representative of the Japanese government, I would like to welcome and appreciate the initiative taken by the African Development Bank, which hosts this forum. Today, I would like to introduce one of Japanese government cooperative initiatives with African countries in healthcare field, as my opening remark. That is the African Health Wellbeing Initiative, hereinafter called AFWIN. As you know, Africa has achieved high economic growth against the backdrop of. Abundant natural resources and rapidly growing population, and is attracting world's attention as a promising market. For further development, it is highly necessary to push ahead with efforts in sustainable health systems as basis of industry. Since 1993, Japan has been addressing development issues in Africa through the TICAD process. Japan took further policy initiatives to strengthen mutual cooperation with African countries and set forth the basic principles of the AFWIN at the TICAD 7 in 2019. The aim of AFWIN is to promote. Self sustaining industries in the field of medicine and elderly care, healthcare services, and services supporting a healthy life in African countries to create the broad based, Mount Fuji shaped healthcare system. AFWIN expects a synergy effect between public assistance and private sector activities. Which is generated through actions in the three fields human resource development, products and services, and infrastructure. In the creation of industries, it is also necessary to enhance partnership among public sector and also private sector. For example, non governmental organizations. Are expected to work proactively and play an effective role in carrying out healthcare projects. It is effective for promoting those actions to formulate bilateral memorandums of cooperation or MOC. It would be considered to develop a framework of discussion between Japan and African countries. Among many stakeholders. By now, MOCs were signed with five African countries namely, Uganda, Tanzania, 
Senegal, Ghana, and Zambia. And the discussions is going ongoing with Kenya for forthcoming signing. Our government and the private enterprises are working towards realization of concept of the AFN. Last year, my office visited Kenya, Uganda, and Ghana, together with some Japanese companies, and had discussions with authorities, such as health ministers, as well as hospitals and companies. This year, we together with some Japanese private companies conducted business matching seminars with Kenya and Ghana to introduce Japanese companies' products and services, which would solve the healthcare issues in African countries. The seminars attracted much attention of the African audience. We are sure to have laid the foundation to link health sectors between Japan and Africa. As we facilitate the signing of MOC based on the AFWIN, we hope to contribute to the improvement of quality of life in the African countries. We appreciate your further support and cooperation. This is the overview and activities of the AFWIN and its current status. Let me finally wish a successful forum with the great panelists, moderators, and all the participants. Thank you very much for your attention. Nishimura Sama, Arigato Gozaimashita. Suzuki Mashite, Ghana Kyowa Koku, Poken Daijin. クウェクアジマンメール閣下よりご挨拶をいただきますアジマンメール閣下お願いいたしますエクセレンシス、ディスティングウィッシュ・レディス・アンジェンスウォーメン、アムオネッド、トゥビー・ウィディオ・オン・デ・オケーション・オブ・デ・ファイド・ジャパン・アフリカ・ビジネス・フォルム・2021トゥギブ・アン・オープニング・リマーク・フォー・デ・セッション・オン・インプロヴィン・クオリティ・オブ・ライフ・フォー・デ・ピープル。ディス・フォルム Could not have been held at no better time than now. At a time when economies have been brought to their knees, health systems disrupted, and vulnerabilities among populations, particularly on our continent, heightened from the deadly COVID 19 pandemic. You will agree with me that health is wealth and also an important contributor to the quality of life and healthy economies. Without good health, Economies will not have the needed human capital to reap the dividends. Resilient health systems driven by innovation are necessary ingredients to improving health outcomes with subsequent improvement in improving quality of life. For relevant innovation to drive health systems, there is the need to leverage on the strength of the private sector, the public sector. Cannot do it all alone. Japan has been a friend of Africa for years, and I recommend together we must explore the potentials in the continent and support ourselves with the necessary digital health needed to drive health systems for ultimate quality of life. The need to pull the private sector along is strategic, as we have seen during the COVID 19 response. The business world. Must see health as an investment which is rewarding and not just a venture for making losses. Using the right business mindset, we can make the health sector a worthwhile venture for investment. We need to support Africa by providing the right innovation and technology to address the health needs of individuals and communities in a holistic manner, from preventive promotion to treatment. Rehabilitation and palliative care programs throughout the life course. The essence in supporting Africa's primary health care efforts will maximize the quality of the health system while also enhancing equity and solidarity. Human development and capacity building within the continent is very key. We urge the government of Japan to strengthen its ties with us. 
to create the needed human capital. This would improve social creation, a key aspect of an equitable recovery for post-COVID-19 pandemic actions. It is my hope that this session will highlight the potentials in the African continent as a business conducive hub with many potentials that will have to be harnessed for ultimate improvements in the quality of life of the population. I thank you. パネルディスカッションに移らせていただきます。モデレーターは長崎大学大学院熱帯医学グローバルヘルス研究科教授の池上清子様です。池上様は国際連合高等弁務官事務所国連本部国連人口基金などの国際機関やNGOなどで長年
office. He works at Office for the Global Strategy of Medical Services and Health Industry, Health Policy Bureau, Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare, Government of Japan. So, Mr. Nakayama, floor is yours. はい、はい、あの、世界で最も健康長寿の国でございます。あの、要は、え、医療、人材の育成を通して日本の医療を世界に広げていきたい。そういった思いでつけたものでございます。え、簡単に説明すると、あの、私どもあの、要はアフリカを含む途上国で実際にその貢献を長く続けたい、え、意欲のあるそのプライベートセクターのマックコミを え、ここにあの、あの、貢献していただく意欲、それが計画がある気で、これを大事にしていきたいなというふうに考えてございます。えっと、あとま、3つ目、4つ目ちょっとあの、すいません、書いてある通り省略いたします。次お願いいたします。はい、それからあの、
、まあ、政府の担当家の方に日本の仕組みを知ってもらったということでございます。で、最後、お願いいたします。あの人材育成じゃないんですけども、えー、とタイムリーなので1点ご紹介すると、そのワクチンをです、ね、安定的に村原に運ぶための自動車、えー、この支援もやってございまして、開発は民間企業だったんですけども、高齢省ではその WHO の認証を取得するということをも支援しております。まあ、これを通してアフリカの,そのワクチンのアクセスも実現していきたいなという考えでございます。つまり駆け足になりました、あのこれがあの厚生労働省の取り組みのアウトラインでございます。以上です。Thank you very much.、Um... Mr. Nakayama, it's very, what do you call, comprehensive introduction of Tenkai project. And I didn't know that you also just find out that the ways to vaccine distribution for, is that the COVID 19 vaccine? But anyway, we are going to talk about the COVID 19 later. Let's see, the second speaker is Ms. Ker, sorry. Is, do you want to have Fifi or Roda? More or less? Fifi. Fifi, okay. <laughs> so, Kefilwe, Fifi, more or less, project manager uh, in nutrition, the African Union Development Agency. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair.、Um, Greetings,、uh, distinguished guest,、uh, Konnichiwa. My name is、uh, Kifilo Fifi Mualufu, and I'm here representing the African Union Development Agency, known as NEPAD. I'm here to talk on initiative for food and nutrition security in Africa. Next slide, please. This is just my presentation outline. Next slide. So, I'd like to really、um, share with you some of the outcomes on the state of food security and nutrition report in Africa so that you can understand where we come from as Africa when it comes to the issues of nutrition, food security, famine in Africa. As you can see in this slide, the world hunger is still increasing. And、uh, looking beyond, more people not, do not have access to safe, nutritious, and sufficient food. Now, we know that, for example, the COVID 19 pandemic, the food security and nutrition issues now are exacerbated. And we have about that 132 million people. So, the total of hungry in 2020 will be added. Thirdly, the world is not on track to defeat malnutrition. We from the African Union, we have what is called Malabo Declaration that really helps the African member states to track and monitor the issue, issues of food and nutrition security. In Africa. And we have seen that the stunting and breastfeeding, there's a bit of progress. However, child weight and other overweight also are on the rise. Next slide, please. So now, this is the reason why we have the initiative for food and nutrition security in Africa, known as IFNA. IFNA was actually launched at TICA 6 in 2016 in Nairobi. This initiative was launched to really help. The African member states to accelerate the implementation of food and nutrition security policies aligned with the Malabo Declaration as well as the SDGs. It is a 10 year、uh, initiative, and right now we're in the sixth year of the initiative. The initiative started with 10 countries, and these countries are Burkina Faso, Ethiopia, Senegal, Ghana, Nigeria, Malawi, Madagascar, Mozambique, Sudan. And Kenya. And now in 2019, at the TIGA 7, we actually launched what is called IFNA Yokohama Declaration. The aim is to actually expand the IFNA footprint in Africa by supporting African governments. IFNA is a government led initiative, and we led the government really to implement and guide us in terms of addressing issues of nutrition in the continent. The IFNA Declaration, however, is there to target. More than 200 million children in Africa, in terms of undernutrition and related nutrition uh, uh, issues like malnutrition for, all, for child over, overweight. We are also preparing now, as you know, Nutrition for Growth Summit will be happening in December in Tokyo. IFNA is working very closely with the member states to ensure that we have something that is concrete to bring and showcase at the Nutrition for Growth Summit in 2021. 
Next slide, please. As I mentioned, IFNA is aligned with the African uh, strategies and goals, such as Malawi Declaration, where heads of state have committed to reducing stunting to 10% and underweight to 5% by 2025, and focusing on the first thousand days of window of opportunity. And this is what IFNA is doing with the member states in Africa. Next slide, please. Now, just to show you the status of IFNA, where we are, we are actually now in having more than 23 countries that really have been sensitized on the importance of uh, IFNA. And last month, we had a workshop with four regional economic communities to talk about IFNA. Next slide, please. IFNA has been working very well in terms of addressing nutrition in the midst of COVID-19. And last year, we had regional technical committee where we supported the regional strategies to really uh, improve on the structure of reprogramming nutrition and food systems within the respective works. This was done through the support of IFNA and of course, AJ and NEPAD. Next slide, please. Like I mentioned before, we have a proper plan in terms of expanding IFNA to African member states. This is what we're currently doing. We're providing also regional training to really improve the capacity on nutrition and food security in Africa. Next slide, please. This is over. Thank you so much for your attention, ladies and gentlemen. Arigato. Thank you. Over to you, Claire. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the kind, comprehensive explanation on the IFNA, uh, as well as that new word for me is nutrition security. So that uh, let us discuss later, we are going to discuss anyway, the nutrition as well as MCH as well, and COVID-19. So you can just talk about those if you did not have time enough. Don't worry about it. Okay, then the third speaker, let me just introduce, is Dr. Githinji Gitani, Gitani, excuse me, Group Chief Executive Officer, AMREF. Did I just pronounce your name correctly? The floor you is, did very well, Professor. Thank you very uh, much. The floor is yours. Thank you, Githinji. Thank you very much. I would just like to go through uh, some very quick slides. I will skip that, that's uh, what we do. But again, you know, you say, Professor, we don't deal with the macro, but just want to make the point that health is a contributor and beneficiary of economic development. And that is all the points that are mentioned here, contributes to labor productivity, but also must have areas that lead to low fertility, low child mortality, increased adolescent child health and nutrition, which is just discussed uh, right now. So this framework shows clearly that health is at the center of economic development. And I think even when I look at the high five that um, have been presented at this meeting, health and the SDG3 should be action uh, in all of them. But when we talk about health, then what health systems do we need to be able to provide that economic development? We need health systems that achieve one equity, social equity where no one is left behind, that everyone is equal in access to needed health services. Secondly, quality services. And when we talk about quality, we are talking about good enough to give the desired health outcomes. I think that for many people in Africa, there may be a confusion between quality, good quality and excellent quality. And I think we need to be able to distinguish those and say that what we need is good enough quality to give the desired outcomes, that we don't need the um, state-of-the-art, um, you know, excellent equipment that's found in high-income countries, as long as lower level of equipment can give exactly the same needed outcome. That's a critical point to remember for private sector who are coming to work in Africa. The final one is financial protection. And this financial protection, which is also about reducing household expenditure, is necessary to allow absorption of innovation. That if we don't, if people have to pay out of their pocket, then there's a problem and then there's, there's no absorption of those solutions being provided by private sector. So that's critically important. But then how do we do that? That uh, we must involve government because government is the best provider of equity and equitable access to solutions rather than just equality where those who have, you know, uh, everyone is given something equal. We want people who don't have to also get as much as those 
uh, who actually have and can afford. We know that there's a big challenge of affordability in, uh, in, in low-income countries compared to high-income countries. If you look at this chart, low-income countries spend on average $26 of domestic general health expenditure, while high-income countries like Japan spend more than $4,000. So that's a big gap. But why? If you just look at this chart I put down here, it shows clearly that the Af total African GDP is half of the GDP of Japan, but the population of Africa is 10 times the population of Japan. That is at the center of the fiscal problem. So we must think about what do we need to do. And this is the difficulty of trying to fix this cube to make sure it is the things we want to do. Therefore, here I'm asking basically that we take three main shifts. Equity is critical. We must start with the most vulnerable first. Secondly, innovation and more sector action. Finally, prevention of disease is critical because it saves us money from having people in the health system. And this is what I've presented in this chart, that actually when you look at the general population, 899% of the kids are born normal, and that's the optimal health. But then occasionally, people may need to get diagnostics, treatment, recovery, and then go back to optimal health. So most of our investment should be here, water, nutrition, sanitation, clean air. But then when people get sick, we must provide equity, quality, and financial protection. So as I close, I would like to make some very quick reflections in my last minute. One, that as we work together with private sector and we work with the Japanese innovators and all the others that we need to work with in Africa, it must be people-centered. Community empowerment is critical, that we must consider communities in everything we do, and we must work with civil society to bridge community knowledge and trust. Secondly, that for us to, to achieve success, we must look at sustainability. That comes from involving communities early and involving governments early. Third, that we must understand the context, that we must innovate bottom up, and we must share South-South learning, like what we are doing now, that Africa must learn from Japan, must learn from Asia, and then finally, that we need all sectors on deck. Thank you, moderator. Thank you very much. It's very energetic presentation. Thank you so much. And you clearly mentioned that the micro and macro, anyway, we have to pursue both at the same time. But uh, I just put the stresses on micro for the session six. That's only the thing. But uh, as you clearly mentioned that the economic development and the macro and micro relations are so important as well as that uh, your point is the people center. That's really the, another concept that we have to pursue. Thank you very much for the presentation. Now we, go, we come to the third, fourth speaker, Mr. Yusuke Takahashi. He is the country director of Koko Plus Foundation, Ajinomoto Foundation. The floor is yours, thank you. Uh, thank you. So, uh, can you uh, see my screen? Uh, so uh, thank you, everyone, and the uh, uh, Honorable Minister of Health and the Dr. Tokaz. I presentation is very quite important about UHC. But I, uh, in addition to UHC, I would like to introduce you universal nutrition and uh, health coverage through business by Affin with Japan. So I added nutrition. The uh, reason is, uh, of course, uh, nutrition improvement is important, uh, especially in sub saharan you know, because malnutrition uh, causes unhealthy gross brain, body, and brain. And uh, this is uh, irreversible uh, after uh, three first thousand days. And uh, the high, and also support for nutrition has a high return to society. And only sub sahara is malnutrition is in increasing. So, so we would like to improve the, this project, Gun Nutrition Improved Project, by creating the develop the social business model. So since 2009. So and now I hand it, it over to the Ajinomoto Foundation. And now I'm in Ghana. And but the, all the processes are carried out by the public private partnership with Ghanaian local people to make it sustainable. And the product is Coco Plus is made, uh, 
uh, collaborated with Ghana and the US and uh, 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 Japan. And it, it improved the uh, uh, anemia and also stunting and uh, uh, acute infections. We have uh, evidences and the made by uh, in Ghana and the soybean is made in Ghana and as a raw material, main raw material. And the distribution is lo uh, by local sales and the local sales and the affordable price, uh, the only 10th uh, cent per sachet. But most important is uh, uh, education, the, uh, for understanding what nutrition is. So we collaborate with Ghanaian government and signed a memorandum of cooperation and in 2018 and officially uh, collaborating with com uh, Ghana Health Service and community health workers conduct nutrition education to mothers and introduce cocoplas as a practical way, one of the solutions. And uh, in addition to that, so I, I said, I emphasize that the collaboration is important by uh, Ghana Health Service, but uh, uh, not only that, so uh, I would like to introduce the affluence uh, power uh, with Japan. So uh, this initiative started from 2007 uh, and uh, after the just uh, within one year, so we started the delegation from the so many governors and the uh, uh, private sectors and so on. And finally, we could discuss how to solve health and nutrition issues in Ghana and move forward or by synergistic approach. So next year, so we could uh, start the collaboration with TAF and SISMEX, that is Japanese in vitro diagnosis equipment and region manufacturer. The SISMEX has a good device in in vitro diagnosis and uh, so mainly uh, put in the big hospitals. So we didn't have the connection, but co by this uh, initiative, we could uh, start the uh, uh, prevention in health uh, teaching hospital. This is uh, one of the uh, effectiveness and also improve the synergetic uh, social impact. And second is this year, so we started the collaboration with TAF and SISMEX and NEC, that is Japanese ICT big companies. So we to contribute to the, uh, to make the social impact to UNHC with IT tools for strengthening the behavior change of beneficiaries. NASA is, uh, uh, is supported by the NEC's IT supporting tool and the uh, whole ch behavior change, put the nudge and they introduce the uh, you know, the cocoa plus and also if the severe anemia or, or malnutrition the uh, 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 device and support to not to the put to the systemx and we have the uh, for few, for 10 years uh, collaboration uh, collaboration uh, activity in Ghana Adamus foundation has human resource development economic growth with local industries and the utilization of Japanese knowledge and the current technology and hosting partnership in the initiative for universal nutrition has covered in Africa but also uh, the African started and uh, now two years uh, passed and three entities are joining and with all uh, whole so we would like to release this this information network to be utilized for contributing uh, UNHC. So such as the uh, actual genuinely synergetic partnership like Afin and also uh, public-private partnerships, we can actualize universal nutrition and health coverage by speeding up businesses uh, with businesses and in, in from Ghana and to Africa. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You just touched uh, the education on nutrition as well as uh, PPP. So you gave us, you know, you introduced many cases of PPP. So that uh, that's, uh, that is really one of the hope that we can just uh, pursue in the future, a private public you know, partnership. So not only the Ajinomoto case, but you introduce also the other companies' cases. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, thank you very much for waiting, Mr. Kato. The last speaker I would like to introduce, Mr. Ryuichi Kato, who is the Vice President of JICA. The floor is yours. Hi, Kigami-sensei, thank you very much. So, I'm going to talk to you about JICA's work. I'm going to talk to you about JICA's work. I'm going to talk to you about JICA's work. In the last year, Suga Sori was a speech of the United States of America, 人間
治療、まあ、トリートメントですね、それからプレ,ケーシプレコーション、えー、警戒、それからプリベンション、予防の3つの柱によります、JICA 世界保健医療イニシアチブをローンチングしております。その中にはですね、病院整備、検査キットやワクチン普及のためのコロドチェーン機材供与等を行うとともに、水衛生施設の整備であるとか、あるいは手洗い運動の普及などに取り組んできております。次のスライドお願いします。今日のあのパネルディスカッションでは、人的資源開発、それから保健システム、民間セクターとのパートナーシップの3つの要素に沿って議論してきていますので、それぞれ具体的な取り組み例を紹介したいと思います。まずはあの人的資源開発です。このスライドで紹介しているのはご存知の方も多いと思いますけどあの思いますがガーナの野口記念医学研究所への協力であります。チャイカは40年以上前からソフトハード両面で協力を開始しヒューマンキャパシティビューディングインスティューショナルビューディングに貢献してまいりました。この中において野口系はガーナ国内の PCR 検査のうち約8割を担いまたテレビを通じて国民や検査状況等を分かりやすく説明するなど感染防止に対する啓発活動にも注力をしてきました。また、近隣の西アフリカ諸国の検査技師の継承を行うなど、地域の中核拠点としての役割も果たしてきております。このような拠点はガーナにとどまりません。スライドの右の地図にありますように、JICA はピカト6においてプリペアというイニシアチブを立ち上げております。ケニア、コンゴミン、ザンビア、ガボン、ナイジェリアに設置いたしました感染症対策拠点ラボの機能強化、人材育成、さらには拠点間のネットワーク強化や AU、あのアフリカ CDC 等との、えー、地域国際イニシアチブとの連携を進めてきており、今後一層の強化を進めていきたいと考えると考えているところです。次をお願いします。次は保健システム強化です。えー、まず安心して治療を受けられる中核病院を整備するために、えー、施設のリハビリを行ったり、あるいは医療機材の整備、専門医療人材の育成などを進めてきております。スライドの例は、アンゴラのトップレファラル病院であります女子ネマシェル病院の整備プロジェクトでこれまでインフラのリハビリ医療機材の供与等を行ってまいりました医療従事者の研修についてはブラジルとの連携を通じて実施してきておりますさらにはこの病院を拠点として母子健康手帳の補給、えー、普及にもですね取り組んできておりますもう一つの例は右側の例ですが、えー、タンザニアなどで実施されているきれいな病院プロジェクトですこれは OS 改善 TQ M、トータルクオリティマネジメントアプローチを病院運営に導入して院内労働環境の改善であったりさまざまな問題解決を行いサービスの改善や医療従事者患者の満足度を高めることで保健システムを強化に資するというプロジェクトであります。次、飛ばしましてその次をお願いいたします。えっと、次にですね民間セクターとのパートナーシップ強化であります。皆様ご存知のように JICA は中小企業 SDG ビジネス支援事業や海外投資者を通じて民間セクターとの連携を強化してきております。このスライドではサラヤとの連携ケースを紹介しております。サラヤさんは2010年からウガンダで CSR 事業として感染症予防の基本である手洗い促進活動を開始しておりますがその後2012年より JICA との連携、まあ、具体的には保健省や病院との橋渡しなどを JICA を行っておりますけれども、まあ、そういった連携でですねアルコールの出資消毒液の現地製造販売の普及実証事業を実施されましたその後順調にですね社会,課社会課題解決型のビジネスを展開されておりましてこの中においても非常に大きな役割を果たされておりますさらにはエジプトへの横展開を図られると伺っておりますでとても嬉しく思っておりますこのように JICA は民間企業が現地で社会課題解決のためのビジネスを展開する上での触媒としての役割を果たしていきたいと思っておりますので積極的にコンタクトをお願いしたいというふうに思っておりますご清聴ありがとうございました Thank you very much for a very quick however the very concise and also deep you know, in the content、uh, Human security you touched and also you just kindly Give us the examples of the three framework which I talked at the beginning of my presentation human capacity building, strengthening the health system, and the PPP. So, let's see. Thank you so much for five panelists for the keeping time so we have enough time for our discussion among ourselves.、Uh, first, we, I would like to just、uh, you know, propose. The 
two questions for you to discuss and present in relation to the main theme of the group six, session six. The one that, the first one is like, uh, when we look at the nutrition, mother's role is always very critical and crucial in the family health improvement. Could you share one or two stories of gender related issues in terms of the providing the health care or providing the health services to family health improvement, um, probably based on your experience or in the, you know, if you have some kind of policy in your country, you can defer to that. This is the first question. Then I would like to speak, uh, touch to this question to Fifi and uh, Mr. Takahashi, as well as Mr. Kato. Who is going to start? I can start, Madam Chair. So, please. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's really a very good question. And um, from IFNA, AUD, and Napad and Jaika, we are actually providing, working with the women through a school feeding program because this school feeding program actually it empowers women in rural and peri-urban areas by improving their health and nutrition household because we provide a market for them to, pro to provide food to the schools. For example, in Nigeria, Nigeria is one of the IFNA countries. We are working with the women farmers that actually uh, add value to fish and this fish has been supplied to the schools. And the caterers have been paid by the government of Nigeria. We were there to really improve the capacity of these women. It's because women, as you know, they are the one that prepares food. If they have access to finance or to money, they are able to buy nutritious food for their family. And therefore, that impacts on their good health and good nutrition. Uh, secondly, AUD and NAPAT, with support of partners, we have been rolling what is called gender uh, climate smart agriculture program in five countries in Africa. And these countries are Niger, Cameroon, Rwanda, uh, Malawi, and Kenya. And what we've been doing in these countries is that we provided some seed money to women to ensure that they improve the agro-processing uh, uh, issues, therefore having access to money to also produce the food that they can sell to the public out there. And therefore in return, their health and their good nutrition is improved through finance. So these are what we are doing in terms of uh, providing good health and improving maternal and child health issues. Over to you, Madam. Thank you so much. You are always very clear and precise. Thank you so much for your, your I mean, the additional comments. Let's see, Let's. who is coming next? Please, then, <laughs> both of you raise hand. So Mr. Kato, the... <laughs> please, please. <laughs> so, uh, the Kato san, please. Hi. Now, I'm going to AUDA, and I'm going to talk to you about the IFNA relationship. I'm going to talk to you about the IFNA relationship. I'm going to talk to you about the IFNA relationship. I'm going to talk to you about the IFNA relationship. I'm going to talk to you about the IFNA relationship. I'm going to talk to you about the マルチセクトラルな取り組みが重要であるということでまさにイフナは保険だけじゃなくて農業であったり栄養というものをこうあのコンバインしてですねあの取り組んでいくというあのイニシアチブ,イニシアチブであるわけですけれどもあのその中で私もですねあの、えー、同じことをちょっと言おうと思ってたんですけれどもやっぱり教育の重要性ですねこれは高橋さんもおっしゃってましたがこれは非常に重要だと思ってます。であの我々のの中でもですねあの、えー、西アフリカを中心にあのみんなの学校プロジェクトっていうのをやってるんですね。これは何かというと、あのいわゆるその教員、保護者、それから地域住民が共同して、子どもの教育環境の改善を目指すというものでありまして、まあ、これはあの展開してるんですけれども、あのここでで,ですね、その日本の解決開発経験も生かしまして、学校給食、先ほどもお話もありました、学校給食の提供であったり、あるいは学校やコミュニティによって、その英雄教育、食育等を推進することが非常に重要であるということで、あのまさに進めているところであります。それからもう一つあのせっかくの機会ですので、ちょっとジェンダーの話をしたいんですけれども、あのジャイカあのすべての事業におけるですねジェンダーの主流化を進めておりますけれども、今後あの力を入れていきたい分野としてですね、先ほどの民間セクターあのとの連携なんですけれども。
まさにジェンダースマートビジネス GSB と呼んでますけれどもこの進行を考えていますこれはあの女性にフレンドリーな金融非金融のサービスの提供が拡大されるための政策の枠組みですね制度,制度とか制,制度整備それからリソースの導入、えー、人材育成等を通じていわゆる金融包摂を促進して女性の企業あのリーダーシップ就労などを促進して社会の課,あの課題解消を図るという取り組みでありますので、まあ、こういったあのことをですねぜひあの地下停電に向けてですねあの強化していきたいというのを思っております以上です Thank you so much. I'm speaking in English and I'm listening to the translation. So there is some kind of the gap in between. Sorry about that. Okay, Takahashi san, the floor is yours. Hey, thank you. So both people,、uh, Kato san and Wang, h a s a very good、uh, explanation. But、uh, I think、uh, I agree about the About gender inequality has i s s u e of human capital development to infants.、Uh, so I think gender、uh, economic equality for in a household is very important because、uh, normally, if the mothers, I asked,、uh, for example, a、uh, village based entrepreneur s system by mothers. So mothers, I asked mothers,、uh, what if they earn money? So how to, how to use? Of course, they said、uh, to. To use for children's education. That's why so it's connecting, connecting, connecting. So, and that's why so I'm, I'm utilizing、uh, the BH based entrepreneur system、uh, by wholesaling coconuts in the low population densities area, especially in rural areas. And the, uh, uh, also the Uh, high h i g h than urban areas. So it's working well, and、uh, by earning money for selling c o c o p r a s and making profit, so、uh, they can utilize this、uh, profit to the education to children. So this is win win situation. Also, nutrition is improved. So this is a very good story. But、uh, on the other hand, it's very labor,、uh, the bridge based entrepreneurship system is very, very labor intensive, and so many needs and know how. So it's, it's difficult, it's u n p r o f i t a b l e actually. That's why so we、uh, continue this BBE system and uh, ho, ho, ho keeping this uh, system, uh, we, uh, we get the, some、uh, profit. It's you, you covered to the、uh, rural areas BBE systems. For doing, we call the, say, the cross subsidization system, but, but the, by doing this,、so、it can become sustainable and keeping sust-、uh, expanding and break even. So, this means so,、uh, we can、uh, improve the increase, maximize the、uh, social impacts. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really happy to hear both of you from the two gentlemen to talk about the gender and the gender promotion at the grassroots level. And also, that the smart gender smart business, that, is that the new name, Kato san? Is that the new naming? Or JICA named it? Or how did you start the naming? Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm going to say that. 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 I see. Thank you. And also, that、uh, interruption for that、uh, labor.、Uh, oh, sorry.、Uh, Takahashi san mentioned that、uh, interruption at the grassroots.、Uh, you know, going for the education and also that the nutrition provision, that the nutrition education is very labor in intensive. Probably that the community health promotion is dealt with rather. You know, it's a very good advantage that the NGO has. So, that、uh, uh, Ditanji san, do you have any comments on this? Labor intensive, we have to do in order to provide the health education to the community people at the community level. Do you have any comments on this? Or do you have any suggestion that we can improve? Is this to the question to me? Yes, to you. Other than NGO representative. Okay, thank you very much. If I, have, if I understood、uh, your question, you're asking the role of、uh, gender, labor, and、uh, health? No, I 
you don't mind replacing your question. No, I mean that uh, uh, during that uh, Takahashi-san's presentation, he referred that to their their input of Ajinomoto is very labor intensive because it is really focused on the education and the nutrition promotion. So, you know, that, that the working at the grassroots level, NGO has an advantage. You may, I thought you may have a good experiences about it. So if you have. Yeah, yes, and uh, we, you know, the, the thing is that um, I talked in my presentation around the role of community empowerment and community engagement. And uh, when you start, uh, like what uh, Takahashi talked about, you start at the community, then you gain community ownership. That what we call labor intensive is actually a process of community integration. When we do water and sanitation, for example, and we go and decide we are going to build a borehole so that women have access to water, so that they can bring up their children, so that girls can go to school instead of fetching water. We tend to involve the community to provide the land on which we do the borehole. We don't buy it. We provide, we bring the community to donate the land. We bring the community to, to actually do the work of, of, of working on the borehole. And we do the same for sanitation. We do the same for nutrition. So I think it is, it is the right approach because it is actually a process of community ownership and community integration. Thank you. Thank you. So we had uh, all the, oh, by the way, uh, I, I may ask uh, Nakayama-san, do you have any input or comments on these three presentation, uh, short presentation or Hi. comment, I should say? Do you have any comments on that? えっと、はい、今のあの非常に興味深く聞かせていただきました。あの、私自身が気づいたのはその家庭の役割、家族の役割と母親の役割。で、あの、お母さん方、あるいはその家族でその教育化進む それから栄養が進むそれと新しい課題に気づくそうすると次のその医療今まではその何か怪我をしたら病気だったのに初めてその医療にかかる段階からその今後の自分のと考えて予防的なことができるそこに一つ日本が貢献できるところがあるのかな
まあ、この考え方からその資金面についてはあのまあ多くの方ご存知かもしれないんですけども、えー、従来その2億ドルの拠出、えー、というところはスケールアップしてさらに8億ドルを拠出するということを表明させていただいたわけです資金についてはこのような貢献を行っているということですでもう一つその、えー、貢献としてはそのラストワンマイルですね日本の,その技術、えー、や強みを生かしてその各国の接種会場日本と違ってその地下鉄に行けるところばかりじゃありませんので本当になんか道なき道村村にワクチンを届けなきゃいけないと。もうラストワンバーに届けるための支援というのをしっかりやっていくんだということを表明したこれでございます。で、あの私あの、人材育成の方をやっておりますけども、えー、何かこの分野でもですね、あの協力できればなと思っております。その非常に急ぐ分野ですので、すでにその外務省さんから国際機関への拠出金、あるいはジャイカさんの ODA の形で、もう急ぐものはすでに着手されていると思いますけれども、あのそれ以外の部分で、よりなんか裾野を広げる観点から、先ほどあの豊田通常さんのワクチンの自動車の話をしましたけれども、ああいったものを発掘していったりですとか、あるいは人材育成ですね、あの物が入っても、あのえー、突然オペレーションできないと意味がないので、何かその、えー、コックスファシリティの活動、えー、を保管する形で,です、ね、人材育成みたいなものにもです、ね、取り組んでいきたいなと考えております。今現在、この個別の案件があるわけじゃないんですけれども、まあ、考え方としては、そういった姿勢であのぜひ貢献していきたいなと。Thank you very much for the input. And、uh, it's a current, it's very current, current issue. So that the, thank you very much you know, for your comment, including your own personal you know, comment. Thank you, Nakayama san. Let's see,、uh, Gitahi san, how do you、yes. evaluate the COVAX facility and the, how, because that in Africa, Uh, in Kenya, it's about、uh, vaccination rate is below 1% up to the date. So, you know, that、uh, Ghana probably、yeah, advanced a little bit, probably 1.4% or something. So, that,、uh, how do you evaluate the you know, COVAX system facility? Th thank you very much,、uh, Professor. And,、uh, you know, Africa, as I showed earlier, has a huge fiscal、uh, gap. Of affordability. And、uh, for the last uh, uh, many years, African children under five have received vaccines through the support of the Global Vaccine Alliance, through what we call advanced market commitments, where the Global Vaccine Alliance goes and negotiates with pharmaceutical companies across the world, including the ones in Japan, and then commits prices and delivers that to children in Africa. Now, when COVID came, it was exactly the same that African countries could not afford to go and purchase the vaccine themselves. As I showed earlier, some African governments spend $26 per capita per year. Now, if you look at that and then you say that the cost of a dose of COVID is $20, you know, because of the two doses plus vaccination, that means you're spending exactly the same amount of money you spend for the entire health for the year on one vaccination. So, COVID, COVAX came up because of this reality. And therefore, the Global Vaccine Alliance and WHO got together to approve vaccines, to do advanced market commitments, to deliver them to Africa. So far, we have had maybe about that 6 million vaccine doses delivered. By now, we should be approaching about 600, 700 million. But of course, the supply challenges came up because the rich countries booked all the vaccines. And then the India situation happened, and the SII, which is a major source for COVAX, you know, became nationalized. This is the challenge that we have. And therefore, African governments have started now to do bilateral deals with other countries to get either donations or to purchase. So, COVAX remains a major hope for Africa, but other routes of delivery, including the Africa vaccine、uh, approach itself of Africa Union, are critical. So, for us and for Japan as our partners and our friends in Africa, We need to look at these multiple sources of vaccines for the African people. But COVAX is, remains a big hope for Africa for scaling up vaccination. Thank you. Thank you for the comments. As long as I know, the COVAX is supposed to provide the 30% of the needed, so that 30% of the people are going to be covered by COVAX facility. I hope that it is going to be <laughs> like that as a target. At least 30% for the most needed. So, is there any comment on the, this topic from the three others? Do you, do you have any intervention? Thank you, Sharon. Sure. 
Go ahead. I just have a minor comment just to say that um, I know that we are focusing on uh, COVID-19 vaccination. However, we shouldn't forget that good nutrition is also critical, that we should also uh, access uh, healthy diets so that when we take the vaccination, we don't take it on an empty stomach. And this also improves uh, prevention. It boosts the immune system. Uh, this is what we are talking about, that uh, with COVID-19, we have to really go for nutritious foods or healthy diets that can actually improve also our immune system to, to really uh, fight this pandemic. Uh, over to you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Chair, could you allow me to comment sure. on something? Mine. I, I know my time ran out, and I really would have loved to say that one of the major partnerships we can do with Japan is COVAX is sourcing vaccines where they are available. There's no reason why Africa cannot develop its own manufacturing plant so that COVAX purchases from that African manufacturing plant and distributes. So one of the major areas is that Africa needs knowledge transfer and also private sector involvement to create a non-manufacturing plant in Africa so that COVAX can buy from Africa, whether it's in Southern Africa, East, West, Central, wherever it is, working with Africa Union, and the COVAX provides the market for the vaccines, but the investment is needed. And we call upon, you know, the Japan uh, business community, TICAD 8, to look at this possibility of actually supporting Africa to create a manufacturing plant where COVAX and Gavi are the customers, and their role would be to advance market supply and distribute to Africa. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for the points. Well, uh, next session followed, followed could be could touch to the point. Well, Chair is next sitting next to me, so that uh, I will just convey that the message to the next session, Chair. Thank you. Now. Thank you very much for waiting for the audiences because at the, I have three questions at the moment from the audiences and the time is not really, you know, allow us to touch to all three or not. But the, uh, let me just read three. So could you just quickly respond to the questions for the audiences? The first question is, what is the most effective impact of UNDP's legal ID agenda and the promotion of digitalization. The second question is, please tell us that financial information services provide, uh, sorry, a financial information service provider, IT company, can contribute to Japanese small and medium enterprises. Just to, let me just read it again. Please tell us that financial information service providers, that is IT companies, can contribute to Japanese small and medium enterprises. The last question is, I would like to ask you specifically how the African government and the related organizations are planning to improve and build the business environment and the system in order to satisfy the improvement of quality of life from the aspect of equity. So those are the three questions. Who can touch to the question or respond to the question first? So anyway, this is ongoing. So I just received the question. So. Is there any hands raised? No? Yes, oh, yes. I, can, I can comment on the last one. Yes. Um, I, I can comment on the last one. And the, and the last question is really asking about how do we improve the business environment to ensure uh, better lives for people? And that's about social security. The big challenge we have in the continent is that first, the, as I showed earlier, the GDP is very low. Number two, is that the tax efficiency, the ability to collect tax is very low because most of the, the, the sector is informal. It is informal, it is the women we are talking about who are cooking and delivering to schools. It's very difficult to tax those women. So I think what we must do in the business environment is that we need to open up the African market. And I think the discussion that you had earlier on this forum about the Africa free trade area is important so that commodities that are manufactured in one place can go to another 
we can start to increase the economy. Also within this health sector, we are discussing a big agenda on creating a common regulatory market for Africa for medicines and commodities. So that when you come and register a product in Rwanda or in Kenya, it is considered registered in the African continent. And that is the agenda of the African Medicines Regulatory Agency, which also opens up the continent. Then after that, it is then easy to use the available taxes to provide social protection to people and have better lives. So these things are critical for us achieving better lives for the African people. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, your point, like, you know, tax and the social protection and market creation for the medicine or the medical field, that could be also dealt with the following sessions. So please don't go away and listen to the next session. So is there anybody to respond to question one and two? The time is coming up. Yes, please. はい、あの、Thank you for thank you for the information sharing. So that uh, the first question is there anybody want to respond to? Oh UNDP's legal ID agenda. Probably we are not very well aware of it. Uh, anyway, the time is coming up. So thank you really so much for five speakers and the panelists and for the active contribution, not only that the presentation preparation and the today's preparation, but, uh, you know, interact with each other and, uh, you know, we can discuss one topic and the three themes and uh, together by five of us. So I hope that uh, this kind of joint uh, or what do you call the teamwork we can just you know do it in uh, not only the discussion but also in actual implementation of the programs and the projects thank you so much for your participation today uh, could you just give them the crap thank you now the time is coming up and uh, I would like to introduce mr. Yutaka Hada who is the Japan Business Council for Africa. So that uh, day six, uh, the last session, not only the last, I'm sorry, that we are going to have two more sessions, but uh, long sessions uh, that uh, Hada-san, you're going to be the chair. So floor is yours, thank you. はい、ありがとうございます。え、昨日に続いて今日もえっと皆さんとちょっとお色々お話をさせていただこうということで、今日はえっとこれからの時間は、え、材料アフリカ大使の皆さんとのえっとセッションということで、ADCセッションの方を始めさせていただきたいと思
やはりその中で再三皆さんおっしゃってるのはやっぱり人材をどうやって育てていくかと言ったところが特にコミュニティ単位でまあ中にはお母さんという話も出ましたけどもコミュニティ単位でこのイニシアチブを実行していくためには何が必要なんだろうということがあの議論されたんだろうなと思っています。まあ、これは私たち、えー、民間企業のやっぱり目線でしっかりと解釈をするということが大事だと思うんですが、まあ、ちょっと感じましたのはネパートの方はどちらかというとイフナというイニシアチブをアフリカのレックスの皆さんのところから導入をしていきましょうというお話をされていて。最後行き着くところはやはり家庭内であるとかコミュニティのレベルに落としていかなきゃいけないそういったところのステップっていうのを多分しっかりと考えないといけないんだろうなと思ってましてそういったことがおそらく各国で議論されてるんだろうと思いますまあこういったお話ももし大使の方から聞ければなというふうに思っていますそれからやはり今一番必要とされてるのが最後の,あのコバックスとかそういったところでも出ましたけどやはり日本とアフリカの関と民がこの4社がどうやってしっかり連携してこのクオリティオブライフを上げるっていうプロジェクトに関わっていくかっていうのもすごく大事なお話なんだろうなと思っていておそらくコロナが呼びかけてるものっていうのはこういったみんなの連携をもっともっとスピードアップしようよとおそらくそのツールとしては最新の ICT の技術なんかがあるのでもう一回それを今のやり方で本当にスピードが上げられるのかといったことも考えながらこれからもう一度取り組みをリスタートさせていくということが民間企業としては非常に大切なことなんだろうなと思ってましてまあビジネス協議会という官民のやはり共同体をなんとか頑張って稼働させようとしている身としては今回のウガンダでのサラヤさんとの協業の話それから味の持つファンデーションさんのガーナでの取り組み以外にもっともっとこんな案件もあって紹介しきれないよっていうぐらいの状況がまあ次回というか次のこういったテーマで話す機会で私の方から紹介できればなというふうに強く思いました、まあ、こういう案件をどんどん増やしていくっていう気持ちでこれからもビジネス協議会っていうのは運営していけたらなと思ってますはいちょっと前説が長くなりましたがそういったことを議論受けてですねまあ、事前に大使の皆様今日ご登壇いただく大使の皆様にはパネルでディスカッションで出てきた議論の中でもここが我が国では一番大事でそこに対してはこういう手を打ってるよっていったところをぜひピックアップしてご紹介いただけないかというお願いと当然議論をされなかったところで自分たちの国では大事だとプライオリティ上げて取り組んでるっていうイシューがあるのでそれも紹介してほしいというお願いをしていますそれから最後に挙げられた課題に対して日本の公的民間どちらのセクターでも構いませんその課題の解決のためにどんなことが日本に期待されてるんだろうかといったことをぜひまあ一連の今日ご用意いただいているスピーチプレゼンテーションの中に盛り込んでいただきたいといいいいうふうにお願いをさせててただいてます、まあ、今日はあの「インプルーブ・クオリティ・オブ・ライフ・オブ・ピープル・オブ・アフリカ」というタイトルでセッション全体は進んでますので大使の皆さんには少し幅広い話題をピックアップいただいてもいいですよということでお願いをさせていただいてますのでぜひともえセッションあの存分に語っていただければなと思っていますと言っても5分でお願いしますということでまず最初にですねえっとベナン共和国大使のアデシュブ大使からスピーチをお願いします。どうぞお願いします。Merci, merci beaucoup.、Uh, merci infiniment.、Uh, je vous demande déjà de passer uh, uh, à la présentation numéro 3. Slide、uh, number 3, please. Très bien.、Uh, ce que nous avons. Constaté、euh, depuis le début、euh, de, de, de ce forum, c'est que le thème de cette session est central pour les ODD. Il est également central dans l'agenda 2063 de l'Union africaine et également pour les high five de la, de la BAC. Améliorer la qualité de vie des populations en Afrique est l'objectif final des politiques et stratégies des pays africains. À travers une augmentation des revenus des ménages, mais aussi 
à travers un meilleur accès aux services de santé, l'eau potable, l'énergie, l'éducation, la nutrition et aux services financiers. À ce que la pandémie de COVID a révélé, c'est la nécessité évidemment d'un système de santé plus efficace, mais, au, mais aussi l'importance d'une prise en compte des besoins essentiels de la vie. Et c'est pour ça que je vais m'apesantir un peu sur le cas du Bénin. Next. Alors, le Bénin, euh, sa stratégie euh, de, pour améliorer la qualité de vie de la population euh, a été euh, donc mise en œuvre à travers un programme qu'on a appelé le programme de gouvernement Révéline Bénin. Dans la phase 1, qui est de 2016 à 2021, et la phase 2, de 2021 à 2026. Au cours de la première phase, le, le, le programme a essayé de mettre en place les infrastructures de base, électricité, route, euh, eau potable, et une reconstruction de l'école béninoise de distance système de santé. Au cours de la deuxième phase qui commence, il s'agira de bâtir un système de santé plus efficace, infrastructures et plateaux techniques modernisés, poursuivre l'amélioration de l'accès à l'eau potable de façon à atteindre une couverture du pays en 2023, améliorer l'accès à l'électricité avec une production nationale couvrant à 100% les besoins du pays en 2024, rendre l'école béninoise plus proche des besoins de l'économie en mettant l'accent sur l'enseignement technique et la formation professionnelle. Et à cela, il faut ajouter les programmes de sécurité alimentaire, de nutrition, de même que ceux relatifs à l'inclusion financière. Next. Pour le Bénin, et dans le cadre de ce thème qui nous réunit, les opportunités d'investissement donc portent essentiellement sur un système de santé plus efficace, l'accès à l'eau potable, l'accès à l'électricité, l'accès à l'éducation et à la nutrition, l'agriculture, l'inclusion financière et on l'a ajouté tantôt euh, des, des, des services d'assurance. Next. Tout ce qui précède montre bien que, en conclusion, si nous avons euh, conclu ceci, que les politiques et stratégies existent pour chaque pays, y compris donc le Bénin, mais il apparaît évident que nous devons conjuguer nos efforts pour bâtir ensemble ce qu'on appelle aujourd'hui l'économie de la vie. Et nous pouvons le faire à travers des partenariats publics-privés. Je vous remercie. そうですね。あの、一言で減る栄養改善といったところに子どもたちにどうやって安定的に食事をっていうところの切り口は日本の経験がうまく活かせるんじゃないかなと思います。こういったところもあのヘルスケアだから病病院とか医療とかっていうところに固定せずに日本の民間企業
But uh, to begin with, I would like to highlight that uh, quality of life is quite contextual and difficult to measure uh, because it will be understood and measured differently in different uh, contexts. Next slide. These are some of the indicators of quality of life, but they are not limited to that. Next. Next slide. Uh, for purposes of this presentation, I'll try to lay on the indicators as uh, outlined in the UN Human Development Index, uh, UNDP Human Development Index. Thank you. Next slide. Now, the case of Rwanda is one that uh, Rwanda has focused on long-term planning, but ensuring that the long-term plans are translated into short to medium-term plans that are implementable and also monitorable. Uh, the Rwanda Vision 2020 was implemented over the last, the last two decades. Now we have the Rwanda 2050, which is focused on the Rwanda we want, and the objective is to become uh, a middle-income country by 2035 and a higher-income country by 2050. And that should go with improving the quality of the life, life of the Rwandan people. Next slide. Now, um, just skip that one. Next slide. Next slide. This is just about the Rwanda Vision 2050, which is about to improving the quality of life of people while transforming the country into an upper middle income country. This is how Rwanda plans and implements, because it's one thing to have long term plans. It's another thing to ensure that they are translated into implementable sector strategic plan and this district development plans, which can be monitored and allocated resources and uh, accounted for. Next slide. Now, I wanted to come to some of the indicators of quality of life as measured in Rwanda, based on the Rwanda Vision 2020 and also our sector-wide plans. Uh, if you can go to the next slide, I want to just go through some of them. Next slide. This is our GDP per capita. Based on the plans that are outlined, this is how it has been growing over time. Next slide. This is a household improving living conditions. You can see different aspects of improved sanitation, ownership of mobile phones, quality of housing. Uh, next slide. This is about poverty and extreme poverty, which is a very, very important measure. You can see how it's uh, drastically is, uh, re 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 reducing both uh, extreme poverty and uh, also poverty headcount. Next slide. We have to go micro and ensure that we are monitoring this at house level and also at district and village level. So this is a map of Rwanda, mapping each of the districts of the country and where it lays in terms of uh, the quality of life is people as measured by those indicators. Next. Extreme poverty, that's next. This is uh, the issue of uh, uh, inequality as measured by the Gini coefficient. As you saw, it's still high, but quite reducing, meaning that the policies we are implementing are working. Next. Uh, this is under five mortality. Uh, you can skip this slide because I've had some lies elsewhere. These are all key indicators that are improving quite drastically, meaning that we are on track for the MDGs. Next slide. This is on um, uh, infant mortality. You can see it's reduced drastically. Next. This is child mortality, maternal mortality. Next slide. Uh, life expectancy, education. Uh, these are all improving. Next slide. Uh, these are some of the areas that are stagnating, as you can see. Uh, next slide, which require more improvement. These are some of the lessons we can Rwanda, learn from Rwanda. I think Rwanda has been able to have impact on those uh, quality of life indicators because of uh, strong ownership of national development plans a strong health system, uh, focusing on homegrown solutions. And these are some of the reasons we've been quite successful. Next slide. Uh, COVID-19 has been a challenge to us and has caused quite tremendous difficulties, but uh, we have to find a way of coming out of this. Vaccines, vaccine, vaccine will be critical. Next. Uh, Japan has been a very important partner for Rwanda and uh, Japan's intervention are in core areas of uh, uh, quality of life, water and sanitation, both urban and rural, basic education, agriculture, energy. So this is a very important partnership. Next slide. Uh, leveraging private sector, I think this is a very important area where we need investment and financing from Japanese private sector, technology and innovation, if, uh, private sector also to bring in research and development and uh, uh, management and leadership skills, which, would, which should uh, we should help us. Oh, sorry, that was my timer. We should be should help us in uh, in uh, in addressing some of the inefficiencies.
Next slide. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, we look forward to continued discussion on this uh, area of importance. Thank you. ありがとうございました、えー、非常にあの印象的なあのプレゼンテーションをしていただいたんですけれどもあのどれがどの分野が重要なのだというお話の前にやっぱり国としてきちっとゴールを設定するっていうことの大切さとそれを設定したら今度はしっかりとデータでファクトを抑えましょうまさにファクトフルネスの考え方で。物事を一つ一つ進められているご様子がこのプレゼンテーションから非常に伝わってきてですねあの素晴らしいなと思いました、まあ、中でも、えー、やはり、えー、幅広く取られている中でもやはり子どもたちの営業栄養状態の改善であるとか水の問題といったところなどはやはり日本に対してなんとか力を貸してほしいというふうに言っていただいているところでございますので。まあ、やはりこういったところをキーワードにして、えー、日本の民間企業の知恵をどうやって生かせるかというところをすで、まあ、に JICA さんとプログラムを一緒に走らせていらっしゃいますので JICA さんとも連携しながら本当に新しい PPP プロジェクトがルワンダでいくつも起こせるようなことをあの協議会として仕掛けていけたらなというふうに思っていますどうもありがとうございました、はい、続きまして、えー、と今度はちょっと地域ですね、レックスを代表いただいた形になってますね、サダックの事務局の方からお話をいただきたいと思います。ドクター・アミーズィ、よろしくお願いします。Thank you, thank you very much、uh, for inviting the SADC secretary to this meeting. I think we can move straight to the next slide. Yeah, so、uh, we were asked to talk about、uh, quality of life、uh, in the perspective of the SADC as a region, as a regional economic commission, a regional economic community. And、uh, we, I will be very, very brief. First of all, I wanted to,、uh, to highlight again that、uh, this is a very broad concept that、uh, can be defined or can be considered in many disciplines. Such Such as sociology, health, psychology, economics, and so on. But I'll focus my、uh, presentation on、uh, the health perspective of、uh, quality of life. And in this case, uh, uh, talk specifically about、uh, physical illness and、uh, psychological、uh, impairment as factors that,、uh, as health factors that affect、uh, quality of life. Next slide. Yeah, so we have not really done an assessment or an evaluation of the、uh, quality of life for the SADC region and its people. But、uh, for the purpose of this particular presentation, I attempted to review a number of、uh, demographic health surveys to see exactly what has been coming out since 1980 to 2015. And the, one,、uh, the factors that、uh, have come out so strongly、uh, to As uh, uh, affecting the quality of life is、uh, the socioeconomic conditions and the physical illnesses. Next slide. So,、uh, I selected just a couple of uh, uh, broad indicators to, that we would use、uh, in the health sector to measure the quality of life or the quality of health sector, the quality of、uh, health services in.、Uh, In the, our member states. The first one is the,、uh, the GDP per capita, which is the income per capita. In the SADC region, we have a broad range. There are some member states who have、uh, up to 15,000、uh, US dollars per annum GDP per capita, and we have the lower extreme with some、uh, with、uh, 462, which, is,、uh, uh, which creates an imbalance. But on average, We have、uh, calculated the, the average income per capita for the region of 300 million uh, people uh, as being uh, approximately、uh, 206 US dollars.、Uh, this is just a, a rough estimate、uh, for our region, which has、uh, a population of 260,、uh, 300 million. 
Now, the other point is the catastrophic cost of health expenditure. We have had studies that have been done by the Commonwealth uh, Secretariat in the SADC region in 2017, and they found out that uh, up to 80 million persons in this region are still, uh, are still suffering catastrophic costs every year, meaning paying for medical care out of their pocket. And that also stands out as a very uh, uh, big uh, issue for the health sector. The other indicator is uh, the access to primary health care. Though the SADC region has 53% uh, 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 which is higher than the African average is still lower than the uh, global average of 66%. So we still have to do a little bit more to improve that. So uh, next slide. So before I say thank you, I, let me utilize the 50 seconds that remain there to talk a bit about what the region is planning in terms of uh, uh, the lessons we've learned in COVID-19. So we are planning to boost the COVID-19 uh, regional and local manufacturing capacity for commodities such as PPE, vaccine, and uh, other equipment such as biomedicals and diagnostic equipment. So we have thrown a plan uh, which we will be uh, speaking to partners about to see how we can uh, improve this area of our regional integration and make sure that we are well prepared in the next pandemic or any other major crisis that might arise. I thank you very much. えっと、そうですね、コメントというよりもしそうであれば各国のそういうデータっていうのはどういったところに行けばあの、公開されてるものなのか教えていただければなと思ってます。オッケー、on each and every one of the study countries. It's a bit back then, uh, uh, it's a bit old now. I think the last uh, uh, economic data, or GDP data they have there is 2017. But on the other uh, uh, indicators I talked about, you like uh, uh, the access to primary uh, healthcare, we, every country would uh, have their data on the Ministry of Health website. We can also give you that data. It's a, it varies between uh, uh, between countries as to when it was produced, but you can also have that data from the latest uh, demographic health survey, which is a five yearly survey that is conducted by the USAID. So we can also use that as a source of information for uh, health indicators in SADC member states. Information that you cannot get directly from those sources, maybe. You can get in touch with us at the Secretariat. We do also uh, uh, periodic surveys on certain indicators, and we compile that data. We can also be helpful to provide you with extra information. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, it's true. The data is a little bit more than Africa. It's a little bit more than Africa. It's a little bit more than Africa. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. はい、Unmute, please, ne? please. Thank you. I was asked, you know, to say a few words concerning uh, our South region, Central Africa. So let me say this. 
improving the life for the people of Africa amounts to promoting their well-being. Well-being can be defined as the fact that population has sufficient means to meet their needs, organize their lives independently, use and develop their talents, and pursue their goals. In other words, improving the lives of the people is a multidimensional issue that encompasses all the themes we dealt with during this forum. But as far as Central African sub-region is concerned, to achieve that ultimate goal, we have to build a prospective vision. In Cameroon, for example, we, we talk about Vision 2035, a vision of the society and overcome five main challenges. The first one is political. We have to consolidate our democratic process and reinforce our national unity. The second challenge is economic. That implies economic growth and full employment. The third challenge is what I call sociodemographic. In fact, population explosion has led to the, an increase in the number of dependent people, mainly young and old, and change the density of settlements. Therefore, there is a need for more infrastructures and social services to match the increasing numbers of young people, especially in the education and health sectors. The four challenges is urban and regional development. In fact, how can we plan the also important development of towns and cities, which are major consumption, as we know, centers, and a gold mine for industrial development factors. And lastly, the last challenge is governance, meaning efficient and effective use of countries' potentials, as well as human, material, and financial resources for development. This is how we conceive, you know, uh, improving the life of our people in the Central African region. I thank you. ありがとうございます。はい、はい、えっと、<laughs> Thank you, ma'am. I have a question for uh, Nishimura san. Nishimura san spoke about AFWIN, a very uh, important initiative. And uh, the question I have first of all, an observation. I observed that the MOP, the Memorandum of Cooperation, are basically signed with uh, English-speaking countries in Africa. I don't know if there is any reason for that. But the most important thing is how do we go about, you know, the process? How do we go about signing the MOP with the Japanese counterpart? That's my question. Thank you.
えー、はいあのちょっとその今後対応させていただきます申し訳ございませんあの宿題として受け止めましたというご発言いただきましたので前期大使あの宿題をご提出させていただきますはいえー、っとはいじゃあもうタイムキーパーの方からもうこれ以上ダメですということが出ましたのでえっとこれでえっとまず最終日の ADC セッションの方を終わらせていただきたいと思いますご登壇いただいた大使の皆さん本当にありがとうございましたえっとこれで先生にお返ししたいと思います池上さんお願いしますはい The panel discussion and the ADC session were safely completed Before closing the, these sessions, I would like to express my sincere appreciation to Your Excellencies, ambassadors stationed in Tokyo, and the panelists in Africa and, and in Tokyo.、Uh, actually, that,、uh, I hope that all the audiences who is still listening to this seminar or The seminar、uh, also shared and received the messages discussed and you know during the two sessions and the raised issues raised in the sessions. And、uh, this session, I would like to just repeat the title of the session for before completing that session Improve quality of life of the people. In Africa. That is really the base, that is really the start for any kind of economic development or social development. Individual people, individual persons' capacity building is really important. So, thank you again. Thank you so much for participation, your active participation. So, this is the complete. The finish of the, the, the sessions. So let me just give back to the floor. Ikegami Sama, Hada Sama, Taishi Kaka, Semon Kano Mina Sama, Arigato Gozaimashita. Sore deva Koko de, Rainen Nisen Nizu Ninen no, Dai Hatskai, Afrika Kai Hatskai, Tikanto Eito no Kai Sai Koko de Aru, Tunisiwa Kyoa Koko no Tokume Zenken Taishi, Mohammed to Elumi Taishi Kaka Yori, ティカッエイトのご紹介をいただきますモハメッド・エルミ大使閣下お願いいたします Thank you very much for this opportunity、uh, Excellencies, dear panelists, distinguished participants all protocol observed First of all, I would like to express my great pleasure to participate in the eighth session under the vital theme Improve the quality of life for the people of Africa as one of the FDB high five priorities in line with the Africa Agenda 2063 and the SDGs. I take this opportunity to express my heartfelt thanks to the FDB Asia for maintaining the organization of the Japan Africa Business Forum for the third consecutive year in cooperation with ADC. The 2021 session is held whereby our, content, our continent is called to tackle the challenges of the COVID 19 pandemic, <clears throat> as well as prepare major international economic events like TICAT 8. I would like, on this occasion and in my capacity as chair of ADC TICAT committee, to draw up a global overview on the preparatory process of TICAT 8. On July 16, 2020, the Tunisian and Japanese governments announced officially the holding of the TICAD 8 summit in Tunisia in 2022, giving the kickoff of its preparatory process. Since then, four preparatory senior official meetings were held via video conference in August and November 2020, in March and May 2021. During these meetings, logistical and security arrangements and preventive health measures were discussed. The co organizers took note of the readiness of Tunisia to host the TICAT 8 summit and ensure all the conditions for its success. About the agenda of TICAT 8, the co organizers focused on the following. First, 
including the issue of coping with the COVID-19 as one of the main topics. Second, engaging youth and the gender issue. Third, digital transformation in Africa. Last but not least, the strong participation of the private sector and its role to support development efforts in Africa through building a Japanese-African partnership in accordance with the Yokohama Declaration 2019 and its action plan. The ministerial preparatory meeting is scheduled in November this year in hybrid format. Physical participation of the AU Troika plus Tunisia as host country plus co-organizers all the other countries will participate online, but the option of holding the meeting completely online is not excluded, depending on the evolution of the COVID-19 pandemic. Pending the ministerial meeting, the joint monitoring committee meeting will be held on July 15, 2021. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as interaction with the topic of our today's session, I would like to share with you some reflections. First, I convey my gratitude to Japan for its tremendous support to Africa in these difficult times through medical equipment, strengthening of health structures. In the domain of quality of life and healthcare infrastructure, the challenges are huge. The impacts of COVID-19 on African economies and society are tremendous. Already registered as one of the three pillars of TCAT-7, the health sector will remain an essential component of the TICAT 8 agenda. Discussions at various international events show that the recovery in Africa will be based on three strategic pillars, digital transformation, urbanization, and regional integration. However, the benefits of the recovery will be achieved only if people can benefit from the basic services of, of course, resilient health system, including equal distribution of vaccines. This requires, first of all, the enhancement of our own resources and capacities, and secondly, strengthening partnership with, inter with international partners such as, Jap such as Japan. A strategic partner for Africa, Japan can advocate limited access, uh, can advocate for Africa's limited access for, to vaccines and urge bridging the health gap. Japan could also play a major role to support African countries in the key areas of research and innovation, technology transfer, capacity building, resilient health structures, etc. As for Tunisia, we are working with Africa to establish partnership with Japan, Tunisia, and Africa in the medical field through training programs for Tunisian and African health experts. Thank you very much for your kind attention. エルミ大使閣下ありがとうございましたエルミ大使閣下ありがとうございましたエルミ大使閣下ありがとうございましたエルミ大使閣下ありがとうございましたエルミ大使閣下ありがとうございましたエルミ大使閣下ありがとうござい
During the forum program, our minds were nourished with torrent of ideas, statistics, analysis, and visions. It will probably take us a few days before we can successfully sift through them. Send me with the amount of quality and quantity of information that has been shared with us, the business forum can be adjudged a big success. During the six days program, it was demonstrated that Africa is on the cusp of a new era. And with the launch of Africa, a free continental free trade area, we are closer to our ambition of creating a free trade area stretching from Cape to Cairo. AFC FTA will create one of the largest free trade blocks in the world with a rapidly growing population of 1.3 billion people. We're also told that 60% of this population size is comprised of young people of less than 25 years old. These figures give Africa a demographic dividend. Taken as a whole, Africa is the world's eighth largest economy and is set to expand over the coming decades. Africa's GDP is already 3 trillion US dollars projected to be 5 trillion US dollars by the end of 2030. The Con Continental Natural Resources Endowment, which includes some of the best grades of platinum, vanadium, nickel, copper, and manganese, remains relevant for the green and sustainable economy of the future. This creates prospect of beneficiation in the value chains of fuel cells, batteries, and other emerging technologies. In turn, Africa is called to ensure that the ease of doing business is improved, to ensure stability within the continent to lessen the risks for investment. Africa should ensure consistencies of policies and various business regulations for confidence to investors. Lastly, Africa should ensure it has sufficient human capital with digital skills, reasonable connectivity and viable infrastructure. Ladies and gentlemen, in the six days program, many more messages were delivered covering the whole spectrum of FDB's high fives that will help Africa achieve close to 90% of United Nations SDGs. The high fives are also intrinsically linked to the African Union's Agenda 2063. At this moment, let me review some of the main points added during the deliberations. We were informed of business opportunities and challenges expanding green energy in national power system of grid electrification solutions and about Japanese technology and experience in green energy. We're informed of development challenges in Africa's food systems identified superior technologies, know-how possessed by the Japanese private sector. Industrialization of Africa could be through structural information, through promoting digitization, industrialization, and diversification. Also, African startups wishing to collaborate with Japanese companies were picked and given time to showcase their businesses. It was also noted that African continental free trade area could be the main vehicle to promote regional integration and trade finance could be one of the effective tools for integration. Lastly, it was also noted that to improve quality of life, Africa needed to keep understand, needed deep understanding of development challenges and identify superior technologies know-hows possessed by Japanese companies. Furthermore, ladies and gentlemen, another important message that came out of this forum is that it is only through collaboration and regular interactions that we can hope to realize the objective to forge lasting relationship among all key stakeholders. Also, I hope we concur, ladies and gentlemen, that this important program will serve as, as an appropriate buildup towards the upcoming TICAT 8 to be held in Tunisia. Finally, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of you all, I should like to thank Excellencies, the Ministers, ADC, Ambassadors, the Director Generals, Senior Government Officials, the Heads of International organization, Organizations, and all speakers, moderators, and panel members. Their presence has been invaluable to us. The speakers empowered us with so much knowledge regarding our beautiful continent 
the cradle of mankind, Africa and Japan. The moderators distinguish themselves with their outstanding professional skills and deep knowledge of the session themes. The fact that all moderators were women was also a powerful statement against gender st stereotype prejudice. Therefore, we congratulate AFDB for the obvious choice of the high quality of moderators. We are also grateful to all those who have been involved in the organization of this event, in particular, the AFDB group under the able leadership of Mr. Takashi Hanajiri and the Secretariat staff members of JAVEF. Finally, I would like to thank the Dean, His Excellency Ambassador Haile of Eritrea and the Deputy Dean, His Excellency Ambassador Ali of Djibouti for their leadership. Lastly, but not least, I would like to thank profoundly Ambassador of Morocco, Ambassador Rahat Ulal for his outstanding role as the Chair of Trinvec for his coordination between ADC and FDB. On behalf of us all, I thank your Excellency, my brother, for your extraordinary role. As JABF is convened on a three-yearly basis, we therefore look forward to engage once more in year 20, 2024. However, the general feeling among the ambassadors is that this forum should be organized more regularly, at least on a biannual or two-yearly basis. In this way, Africa-Japan trajectory of strengthening relations could be more viable. In conclusion, as they would say in the Japanese proverb, Ichigo Ichi E. Therefore, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we value this moment of our meeting as it will remain a lifetime experience. Arigato gozaimashita. We thank you so much. ルナマスマツゴニャマ大使閣下ありがとうございました。続きまして、アフリカ開発銀行アジア代表事務所所長花尻隆よりご挨拶申し上げます。花尻所長お願いいたします。Thank you. Uh, excellencies of the African Diplomatic Corps, distinguished moderators, panelists, guests of public and private sectors, both in Japan and the continent. AFDB colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for all of your contributions to and participations in this JABF 2021. Thanks to the eloquent speech by His Excellency Mr. Ngonyama, South African Ambassador to Japan, we have already heard a good summary. Therefore, I will be brief. I firmly believe now after the six webinar series, we all know why high fives are relevant to African development, why the Japanese private sector is the perfect mariage uh, for the continent's rising businesses, and why the timing of enhancing the engagements with Africa is now. Biggest thanks to all the people who made remarks and at Bari to the discussion. In particular, huge applause to five excellent moderators. Many thanks to our development partners, Jetru, JICA, UNIDO, and UNDP. And thank you so very much, my dear bank colleagues. Furthermore, I would like to reiterate my sincere appreciation to all ADC ambassadors and diplomats in Tokyo for their tremendous efforts, cooperation, and contributions. I would also like to express our deepest condolences to the people and the government of the Republic of Congo for the untimely loss of His Excellency, the Ambassador, Mr. Felix Ngoma. May His Excellency's soul rest in peace. Now I would like to switch to the Japanese language. Uh, パネルディスカッションエディシーセッションスタートアップセッションでたくさんのことが明らかになりました時間の制約で活躍しますがアーカイブでのご視聴資料の閲覧をお勧めしますここでしかご覧になれない資料をお聞きになれない議論がありますく
ルッツ変革の担い手成長の源泉である若者女性を包摂し活躍の場をビジネスの中でデザインすべきこと4つ人材育成教育への投資の必要性そして5つ目に魚沼山大使閣下もすでにおっしゃった通りすべてがつながっていることハイファイブズのそれぞれすべてがそれぞれの達成成功のために不可欠ですそして最終的にすべては人々の生活の質の向上につながるべきです、えー、JBF で明らかになった事柄はここでおしまいにはなりません私どもの、えー、アジア事務所の活動に抽象的にではなく具体的に生かしてまいりたいと考えますまた私どもアフリカ開発銀行での、えー、中で議論の成果が滞留するのではなく来年のティカットエイトに向けて広く共有活用されるべく力を尽くしてまいりますアフリカビジネスにリスクはありますしかしそのリスクは制御すべき課題でコインの裏側には機会オポチュニティがありますビジネスでは良いビジネスパートナーとの出会いバイヤーマルチの開発金融機関国際機関の支援ツールの活用が鍵です JBF のビジネスマッチングのプラットフォームは、えー、幸いなことに来週金曜日まで続きます、えー、積極的な追加登録ミーティングへのご参加をお勧めします、えー、そしてその後ももちろん私どもの事務所は存在しております、えー、今はリモート中心ですが霞ヶ関ビルにミーティングスペースも備えた事務所を構えております引き続きお付き合いを心よりお願いいたしますそろそろ時間です皆様またリモートで東京でアフリカ大陸で望む楽は来年チュニジアでお会いしましょう。アサンテサナ、Thank you very much。メクシボク、ありがとうございました。原尻所長、ありがとうございました。以上をもちまして、6日間にわたって開催させていただきました、第3回日本アフリカビジネスフォーラムを終了いたします。皆様、ご参加いただきまして誠にありがとうございました。本日のプログラムを含む本フォーラムはアーカイブとしてオンライン会場にてご視聴いただけます。プルダウンメニューからご希望の日付、セッションとご希望の言語を選択しご視聴ください。本フォーラム終了後、アンケートがポップアップで表示されます。ぜひアンケートへのご協力をお願い申し上げます。すぐのご回答が難しい場合は、イベントページの右上にありますクリップボードのマークをクリックいただくとアンケート一覧が表示されますのでそちらよりご回答をお願いいたしますなおオンラインビジネスマッチングは引き続き7月16日まで行われております一般視聴者としてご,ご参加の方でご参加をご希望の方は JABF 事務局までご連絡ください改めまして本日はご参加いただきまして誠にありがとうございました。